Today, as you can see, I am sitting at a kitchen table and I'm lucky enough to be speaking with Carol Grace Anderson here in Nashville, Tennessee. You got it. Carol Grace, thank you so much for having my crew and I here in your home. Oh, thanks for coming over. Hey, I'm glad you're here in Music City and I'm glad we get to talk. What a cool place you have, first of all. And I know you said it's your studio because you do a lot of a lot of different things and your husband plays guitar. And so you said you just live here in your studio. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Tell everybody about the types of things that you do. Okay. Well, I love to write books. And my first book was Get Fired Up Without Burning Out. And that was my main topic. Still, people request that. And I, most of the time, that's what I speak about. But because since, you are a speaker, you're a motivational speaker, yes. as well as an artist and all, all of these other amazing things yes. that you're going to talk about. And I've been speaking for about 23, 24 years. Uh, then about 10 years ago, I uh, met the love of my life by accident. I was in Office Max and <laughs> I was in line and he was in line. And uh, I thought, gee, he looks familiar. And I said, excuse me, aren't you a guitar player? And he said, yeah, that's what I do. And we started talking and I had a music background and so we had a lot in common. Tell everybody about the show you were affiliated with. Yes, I was on Hee Haw for 10 years. Some of you may remember it. And I remember it. We used to, that was a big deal at my home to watch Hee Haw. Oh, wonderful. Mm -hmm. Well, it was fun. Yes. You know, and it was quick and there was good music and a few chuckles. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was on as one of the backup singers for Roy Clark. And uh, my sister and I toured with him, in fact, for 10 years. So we went to Russia on a friendship tour. We went all over the country. We used to do The Tonight Show and all these fun things. And it was just fabulous. And on top of that, you went to school for psychology. You got a master's in psychology. I did. I did. A actually, it was uh, counselor education, okay. uh, which slash psychology. And in fact, I taught for five years in upstate New York. I taught in a correctional facility for male felons. And I was teaching life skills and English. I know you've taught mm -hmm. English. And after five years, I was starting to get burned out. And mm -hmm. I thought, I'm seeing the same guys come back. And I thought they were all rehabbed and doing great. And then a lot of them would come back. And I just thought, I realized change is an inside job. So on weekends, so I wouldn't stay burned out, I got a little music group together with my sister and two other women who were friends of ours. We called ourselves Ladysmith, and we played all over New York and New Jersey and Pennsylvania. And someone heard our songs and said, oh, you ought to move to Nashville because you write some really cool songs. So we said, well, we don't know anybody. And they set up a meeting and they said, we do. We'll set up a meeting. And so we came down here with our little demo tape and played it for a publisher who, uh, with a very big company called Chapel Music, it's now Warner Chapel, and they signed us right up. So after uh, we got back to New York, I finished the year teaching, and they all finished the jobs they were doing, and we decided if we want to really pursue this, we're going to have to take a leap of faith. And one of the women had just been divorced. She had two little kids. She came. So we all took all these big, big leaps of faith. I had just gotten my master's degree, and here we are moving to Nashville to be songwriters. Will you, <laughs> will you, or will you not sing me a few lines of a little something? Okay, well, here's the kind of music that I write if it's for my program. Okay. You got to get going, got to keep flowing, got to keep moving on. Change is something happening. You can either laugh or cry. But change is just like breathing air. When you stop, you die. You got to get going. You got to keep flowing. You got to keep moving on. Stuff like that. I can feel it. <laughs> I can feel it. It's got a little New Orleans flair or something about it, too. I don't know. It's like, ah. Yeah, it's kind of rocking. Yeah. I, I thought, I'm just going to write songs that I like to sing. Mm -hmm. So they're not real country. They're more kind of pop rocking kind of bluesy songs. Right, I think that's that what I, it is. I, I have yeah. the most fun singing. So Okay, so you come down here. Yeah. So uh, then we started singing backup. People would say, oh, um, would you sing on our demo tape? And that led to us singing with Johnny Cash on an album. And when we were on the road, we got to uh, s sing with Jimmy Buffett. We got to sing with uh, Mickey Dolenz of the Monkees. <laughs> and uh, I have all these photographs that are just So much such fun wonderful memories. I'm so glad my sister and I took thousands of photos. I'll have to show you some before you go. 
Um, what was, was it like? Fun. What was it like for you to go out on the road? Like, how did you feel? And were you compensated in a way that, like, was it more of the experience or the compensation that that drives a person to do something like that? I think it's the experience. It was such a wonderful, first of all, to work with Roy Clark. Those of you who know Roy Clark know of him. He was not only an incredible, he is an incredible performer, but he's a terrific person. You know, he's a master guitar player, and he's in the Country Music Hall of Fame, but he's just a great guy. He's like, like our family. We still stay in touch, and he's just, a, so it was a great adventure. And often, because they had a big tour bus, of course, but we had a big band with all the guys and the sound guys and all that, so they were on the bus, and the band leader and the backup singers flew in Roy's plane. Roy had a, a Mitsubishi marquee, mm -hmm. and so we would fly in that. It was such an adventure sometimes. When you be did that for 10 them. years? Yes. We'd look at the screen and we'd see this red. We'd go, oops, okay. Uh, but anyway. Uh, because I think that's what, you know, prevents a lot of people from acting on something. Is that, you know, what they're attached to the outcome of it. Mm. And the experience, right, is is really the the greatest part. Absolutely. And to uh, do all that with my sister. We were together 24-7. That's great. And unfortunately, when she was 41, she passed away of breast cancer. So I have all these memories, and she took thousands of photos too. Mm -hmm. So I just am so grateful that we had that quality time for 10 years to just hang out and, and be taken care of. We didn't have to worry, you know, we'd stay in hotels and we would eat room service or they would serve us food or we'd all go out to a restaurant. And we thought, wow, you know, it was just a fabulous experience. So and then we got you... to sing for all these audiences. Right, and how do you take that? and move into all of these other amazing creative things that you've done. Well, when I met Coleman, uh, it was just so much fun to hang out with him. So I, I just thought, now, what can I do? Things are changing in the speaking business, so I need to have a new kind of topic. I want it to be fresh, so I don't just do get fired up without burning out. And so I had written a book called Some Angels Have Four Paws, and it was I published it myself. And I went to an art expo. I started painting five years ago. I just, on a whim, my niece said, what would you like for your birthday? And I said, I'd like a little paint set. So I started just kind of painting, you know, teaching myself. And people said, oh, that's really good. So I started taking a few classes. And I would uh, take pictures of my artwork. And I went to an art expo in New York two years ago. And I'm walking around all these uh, rows and rows of whimsical, cutesy kind of art, little daisies, and I didn't do that. I did more uh, a finer kind of art that was rustic and uh, very simple, not complicated, because I wouldn't know what to do. Uh, so anyway, I had all my artwork with me on my iPad to show people. And I met with a woman who's an art consultant and she loved country music and wanted to hear my story, so I was telling her, and I showed her my little book, Some Angels Have Four Paws, and she said, that's your nugget right there. So at the art show, I went the next day and walked all around the rows and rows and more whimsical, cute little things that were computer generated. I thought, this is just not me. So I thought, my feet are killing me, but I'll take one more step. So I went down one more aisle. I got to the end of the aisle, and there's this huge booth. It says Blue Mountain Arts. And I was very familiar with the cards from Blue Mountain. You know, mm -hmm. they're in Cracker Barrel and all kinds of gift shops. So I thought, well, I'll go over there and then leave. So I went over and I saw that they were advertising gift books. So I said, oh, well, I have this little book. And they said, that's just what we're looking for. <laughs> but since you've already published it, why don't we change it, add pictures? Why don't we revise it completely? And you'll have to come up with a new title. So I thought, how about Paw Prince of Wisdom, Life Lessons from Our Dogs? So they said, perfect. They said, that would be perfect. So this is the book. And this it just came out like uh, about four months ago. And in fact, I'm going to do a book signing tomorrow in Atlanta uh, at the big Atlanta Gift Mart, and whatever they call it. There's thousands and thousands of people. So I'm very excited to go and meet with the people who have really made this happen. That is so exciting. And then on top of that, though, you took your art and you started making cards. I mean, like this one. 
Yes. And this is, you painted this. I did. And then you just sat dried flowers on it. Uh-huh. I did. So then you took that and you started using your artwork to make cards. Yes. Right? When I met with the people about the book, uh, the, on my business card, he saw some of my artwork and he said, is this your artwork? And I said, yes. He said, oh, we need you to do an artist line of cards because you're a writer and an artist, so you could do the artwork and what's written inside us. <laughs> that sounds fun to me. <laughs> that is amazing because you painted the back of this and then sat dried flowers on it, right. and then they reproduce this yes. and it becomes a card, and then you write the inside. Yes, yes I do. I think they're awesome. Matter of fact, mm -hmm. this the inside of this card mm -hmm. is one of my favorites. Can I read it? Yes, please. Actually, I would like to hear you read it. Okay. And I wrote this about my husband. I always dreamed of that special someone who was kind, fun, loving, smart, supportive, flexible, honest, all the good stuff. You are all that and more. I love you. See, so, that's yeah. awesome. Very now that may inspire other people, see. Right, and I feel like it's very down to earth and I just think that the colors and in, Thank you. in the paintings just really come out. So Thanks. pretty. Thanks. I so just, pretty. I like warm colors and uh, a, a rustic look. You know, I like things that are vintage and just a simple charm. And I also just think for my audience that it's amazing that you have taken passions and interest and created something from that. You know, to say, hey, you know what I want to sing? I'm going to go on the road and do this. I want to get a degree. I'm going to do that. I, I want to write a book. I'm mm -hmm. going to do that. And you're making things happen with your artwork. I want, I'm going to teach myself how to paint. So what would you say that your passion exactly is? Well, underneath it all, I love to inspire and encourage people. And I was always encouraged by my mom and dad. My dad was in the ministry. My mom was a piano teacher in New Jersey. And uh, they were always very inspirational and very supportive. When I had just gotten my master's, I said, hey, mom and dad, I, I think Mary Beth and I are planning to move to Nashville. <laughs> oh, really? When? Well, next month. <laughs> and they go, okay, that's great. And they were always supportive. And they, uh, my dad built a trailer to carry all our stuff down from uh, upstate New York. And so we moved to Nashville. And, you know, we just were encouraged. And maybe because I grew up around encouragement, you know, there's nothing like encouraging and supporting somebody else. It does such a, a big thing. It really um, starts something. It plants a seed, and it makes me feel good, and it makes them feel good. And if anything good comes out of it, we can only hope and do our best. If we don't try, it's never going to happen. So we have to do something to make something happen. Got to take action. And you know, I, I feel like your life purpose, it's a feeling you get and not a role that you play. And I feel like if you look at your book, if you look at your cards, if you look at Woof Driver, which is something else that you've been doing. <laughs> this is a new thing. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is a program that is on Facebook. And I was requested because of this Paw Prince of Wisdom book, they thought, oh, you'd be a good host to have your own show. So every Monday and Friday at 7 o'clock Eastern Time, I do about a 15-minute program on what we can learn about life from our dogs. We don't learn algebra or world history from our dogs, but we learn about love, about flexibility, about persistence and patience and courage and and having a great attitude. Our dogs just wake up happy. They're happy to be here. They're happy it's Monday or Friday or whatever the thing is going on. They're just in, uh, very happy. And I just see this common thread for you, like that your purpose truly is to lift people up. Yes, I, know? I hope so. I really, that's my whole goal is to uh, help people along. You know, I, one of my favorite quotes is by Ram Das. And it's very simple. He says, we're all just walking each other home. And when I think of that, isn't that true? I mean, we all need to lift each other up, not tear each other down. We need to encourage and support and, and be there for others. And they're there for us too. I mean, it's a mutual giving. What do you find the greatest challenge to be in doing that? Uh, some people are very adverse to change. 
and they don't want to change. And you can't make somebody change. That's what I learned from teaching in the, the correctional facility. <laughs> it's an inside job. Change, you have to want to change. I can encourage people to change and give them some tips on what they can do to change their life. But until and unless they take action, nothing's going to happen. Nothing. You've got to want to. Of all these roles that you've played, though, which one has been your favorite? Oh, it's whatever I'm doing at the time, really. I love writing books. I love speaking to audiences of every description and telling the whole audience what I'm learning. And I love uh, painting. I mean, it's such a uh, stress-free thing to just sit and paint and figure out what kind of card can I make that will be happily opened and they'll, they'll save it. You know, most people frame these cards or they put it up somewhere. And I just think that is such a neat thing. If I can just add a little bright light to somebody's life, that, that is my goal. And so whether I'm painting, I'm lost in it. That's why I think all these adult coloring books are so popular because it's very peaceful and stress-free to just sit and color. Mm -hmm. So when you paint or when I write, I can share what I'm thinking and feeling. And, and I love doing this dog show because the people who watch it are usually dog lovers. So I love to connect with them in a different way because we're talking about life and dogs. So whatever I'm doing at the time, I'm, I'm all in. I'm in it 100%. <laughs> so what advice do you have for other people to go for it? Stop making excuses because it's never perfect. It's never a perfect time, ever. There's always going to be something that you can say, well, I don't really have the time right now, or I'll wait till I retire, or I'll wait till um, I'm, I'm a little older uh, because right now I can't take that chance, or I'll wait till I have more money in the bank, or I'll wait till summer vacation, or I'll wait till the kids are back in school, or I'll do this. All excuses. If you want to do something, you have to start today. And you can do that by writing down one thing, saying, tomorrow I'm going to call this person who I know can be helpful or give me some information, and make a list of everything. And another thing is to learn to be more grateful, because what we focus on flourishes. So if you have a grateful list, and when I get uh, bummed out or feeling challenged, which everyone does, I sit down and write a new grateful list, say, look at everything going right instead of everything going wrong. I love and we, that. When we focus on everything going right, so much more right comes into our life. It's, it's funny how that happens, but it really does. You know, it, it's amazing. Carol Grace, we need to send everybody to your website so they can see all of the amazing things that you're oh, doing. thank and, you. And keep up with, with all of that. Okay, well, I have two. One is, uh, and they're under construction, but carolgraceanderson.com. Also, getfiredup.com, and now there's a new one, hipartwork.com, with my artwork, so if anyone's interested in that. I just think it's so awesome that you, that you have created this new career, really. This, I mean, it's not <laughs> it's a hobby. Wild. This is a business. This it is, is. I mean, this is beautiful. These, these things are being mass-produced all over, all over probably the world. Uh-huh, they do. They send them to Manila, and they... they uh, have they put them in different languages the book I forget how many languages it's going to be translated into so I just I'm so grateful to have Blue Mountain behind me uh, for all these uh, projects well congratulations and uh, thank you so much for meeting with us today oh thank you I'm so happy to meet you and the team Lynette it's thank just you. fabulous I love what you're doing you're making a huge difference thank you yeah thank you so, so much I appreciate what you're doing and I talk to you, 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 and we love, we love, and we hate, we hate, and we tap and run straight. We try to relate. This is my breakthrough. Whoa. Said now, this my breakthrough. Whoa. Oh man, this my breakthrough.